Yo, what's going on people? I'm Alex. Welcome to the Stop Being Busy podcast. So a little bit about what this podcast is. This is episode one. Um, I'll be covering a lot of things really. My health, fitness, parenting and being self-employed. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm self-employed. I'm a data analyst slash business intelligence analyst. Um, what that means, basically, I look at numbers, look at data, build dashboards, build visualizations. Um, and I help organizations understand what their data means about their customers so they can make the right business decisions. So I do this on a freelance basis. Um, Want to be moving more into um, running it for my own business. So winning my own clients um, rather than contracting what I do at the moment. We're going to get all into that in another day on another podcast. We're going to talk about contracting, freelancing and whatnot. But um, yeah, I just want to give you a little bit of intro on what Stop Being Busy is. So the idea and the concept actually came to me many years ago, many, many years ago. It was back in, oh, I don't even know. It was maybe like 2014 when I was thinking about changing industry. So at the time I was working in insurance, um, didn't really like my job. Um, I was working in claims. So originally in Brighton, moved back to London and I was working in um, a renowned uh, insurance firm over in Surrey. Uh, the office is no longer there, but I was over in Surrey at the time. So I was traveling there from London. Um, didn't really like my job and I thought I was just like wasting my time. So every morning, hour to two hours to get into the office I was like being late I wasn't really putting the effort in and I knew it wasn't really a true reflection on me as an individual so I needed to make a change and that's when the idea of stop being busy just came around came about and it's something like become my own little personal mantra since then so if I'm thinking I want to do something that I can't be bothered I just tell myself stop being busy and that's literally it so yeah I've been playing around with the idea um, over the last couple of years, but now I'm actually being, I've stopped being busy myself and I'm putting this podcast out so I can share um, just some of the things that I go through on a day-to-day basis, some of the things that you might be able to relate to, you know what I mean? Um, I've got a bit more life experience than I had when I first had the idea for myself, um, so now I just want to share it with you. So the podcast, it's mainly been started because I want to give myself a bit of personal can't speak I want to give myself a bit of personal accountability um, just to get fit so my weight fluctuates like year to year month to month so where I'm now I'm like 104 kg I'm not like super overweight but I've got a bit of a belly on me um I when I train you can see that uh training I adapt really quickly but obviously I'm getting older now I'm 38 now so I really do need to be a bit more accountable, um, especially as I have a little one running around. So my son, the main reason for me to get fit and get healthy is just to give myself a bit of longevity and be able to do the things that my son wants to do. So my son is 20 months now, uh, coming up to 21 months actually in the next couple of days. Um, yeah, he's a little, he's a live wire. He's a live wire. <laughs> he's a live wire. He runs around. He's got lots of energy. He's very active and he's only going to get quicker as he gets older, bigger, stronger. Do you know what I mean? And then if we have more kids in the future as well, um, then yeah, it's up to me to really look after myself so that I, it's only fair so I can give it back to them um, when they're running around playing and obviously um, leave good memories of them as well. So that's what Stop Being Busy for the Health and Fitness is all about. Um, I've spoken about self-employment so I've been self-employed now for about five years uh, started in 2018 so I came out of insurance I got a job um, in in data analytics um, so I was building reports and dashboards for a few advertising companies in London really good gig uh, gigs I moved around a bit I got a lot of really good experience met some really good people met some really good friends made some really good friends sorry um, and then around in 2018 uh, my wife got a sabbatical. She was a teacher at the time. So she got a year off of work, which was um, pretty cool. And I was like, wicked, we can uh, go go traveling. But I obviously need to work still. I need to make some money while I'm away. Uh, my wife was a lot better than me <laughs> just saving. Uh, she had a better job. She was earning more at the time. Um, she's just a lot better um, with her money. Uh, so she had some savings that she could rely on. But I needed to work because I, I wasn't ready in that position. I was working a really low paid job. Um, and I just wasn't able to save at the time. So I didn't really know what to do, but I knew I needed to do something. And this is when the idea of like contracting the freelancing came around for me. Uh, one of my good friends, 
Um, he was contracting at the time. I met him in one of the agencies. He was contracting at the time. And he just kept saying to me, Alex, why didn't you try contracting? <laughs> why didn't you try contracting? You know what you're doing. You know your stuff. Like, you're accountable for your work. Like, give it a go. Do you know what I mean? It gives you the op- opportunity to be flexible. You could potentially make more money. La, 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 la. The things go on. Um, and then he actually set up an interview for me, which was which was amazing. He put my name forward. Um I went to the interview, I got the job, which was great. So I started my freelance gig and then um, I was actually going to leave. I was actually going to leave when it came around to traveling, but I just had a conversation with them. I was just like, look, if I don't ask, I'm not going to get. So I had the conversation. I said, look, I'm going to be moving to Southeast Asia with my my girlfriend and our fiance at the time, now wife. Um, Would it be possible if I continue working um, UK hours while I'm away? And to my... um, astonishment they said yes which was great so pretty much the majority of the time while I was traveling I was working under the UK wage and living in Southeast Asia which was wicked so I was able to get some savings behind me as well get some really good life experiences culture food all of this all of the great stuff but then also um, continue developing my career at the same time so yeah that's how that all came around that's a quick intro um, a little bit about my fitness journey to date so the last 10 years um, let's go back actually when I was at uni my main sport at the time was football so I started playing in goal as a goalkeeper um, but because we played football so much I was playing about four to five times in the week with two 90 minute games so I was playing in goal um, for all of them and then training as well because there were so many opportunities just to play I started came out on pitch um, I always had a bit of pace on me back in the day um, so I started playing up front I knew where the goalkeepers didn't like to put the ball. So that was like my reason for going up front and it helped me score a couple of goals in my in my career. So I played in goal for a bit and played up front. Um, but I was getting loads of injuries as I started to get a bit older, especially with my hamstrings. Um, and they've plagued me pretty much until now. So I'm really looking for ways where I can actually get rid of these issues. I can continue running. And if I want to play football every now and again, I can get back into it. So yeah, that's my intro on what Stop Me Busy is going to be all about. There's going to be lots of different stories, uh, topics I'm going to be going into. So like foods that I'm eating, like I mentioned before, self-improvement, uh, tracking in the gym, the ways that I track, how to set your day rate as a data, as a contractor. Like, there's lots of things I'll be covering. And again, these are all things that I've experienced over the last five or 10 years. And then hopefully I can like share back and help you as well but anyway on to this week's topic so it's how to get match fit for a one-year-old so as i mentioned my little boy luca he's 21 months here 20 month 21 months old um he's nearly two years old um and when i had a kid i'm not even gonna say when i had a kid when some of my friends um are expecting them and the dads are asking me what is the one thing that I should expect it's not you're not going to get sleep it's not your diet's going to be all over the place but one thing that I say to them is listen trust me work on your stretches and work on your deadlifts because you're going to need it for your back all the bending picking up kneeling like getting into weird positions like all of that stuff like if you're not looking after your body um, and then you put it on top not having sleep and then not eating well do you know what I mean you're only going to lead to injuries so a big thing is all about just like incorporating ways to in, incorporate and train it into your daily routine. So some of the things that I've been doing is working on or including my main compounds into my lifting. So in the past when I was going to the gym, I didn't really have a plan. Or if I did, it'll be body splits. So I'll be doing like back and biceps one day and then I'll be doing chest and triceps another day and then I'll be doing just a leg day but then what would happen is like chest is my favorite day because it's the one that I'm most comfortable with so I'll do chest day and then I have a, have a day off then I'll do back day and then I'd have like four or five days off and then it always it always like by coincidence or magically mystically always happened to be leg day that I skipped and if anyone knows, I've got chicken legs. I've inherited them from my mum's side, I believe. Um, they always like wind me up. Like my legs are like massive at the top, like my quads and the thighs and everything. And then as it gets to the knee, and then below that it's just like skinny calves, little bony ankles, and then big feet. So they can literally chicken feet, chicken feet, chicken legs. <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. You get what you got. You you got to deal with what you got, what you get given. You know, and um, that's it. So. 
yeah, I, did, I was always skipping leg day and then I was always going back to chest day. He's like, yeah, I could do chest day, chest day, chest day. And that's probably why my chest is probably my easiest part to train. If I just like go to gym for like two or three times, um, I can see a difference in my chest, probably because I've worked it the most. Uh, but what I'm trying to do now, when I, I listen to a podcast, it's called uh, Mind Pump. Uh, Free America guys, uh, they used to be fitness personal trainers, I believe. They do a daily podcast and they talk about like all things that are happening in America. They talk about their families, their kids, whatnot. And then the main thing is like fitness and fitness questions. So people call in, they talk about their fitness issues. It could be, I can't get my hamstrings to grow. What do you recommend? And they'll give them advice, blah, blah, blah. Really good podcast. Go check it out. It's called Mind Pump. Um, yeah, apologies if like, I sound a bit muffled. Um, it's now May here in London. And hay fever season for me has fully kicked in, so I'm not going to be able to breathe probably from now until I don't know December time. So um, yeah, if you've got any tips or remedies or home remedies or mother's tales or anything that helps with um, hay fever, please let me know. I've pretty much tried everything. Sometimes they work, some things work, but this year I'm absolutely struggling. But I've got to deal with it. But anyway, yeah, I'm listening to that podcast Mind Pump. And they've got some uh, training programs. So I decided to invest in them. In the past, I was always like, if I can't get it for free, I'm not doing it. Um, and I've had to slightly change my mentality as I've got older. Reason being is what I've realised, especially with my work, is if you don't invest in yourself, you don't get results. So investing in yourself could be paying that £500 for a course. Obviously, if you've got the money to spend paying that £500 for a course or paying a hundred pounds for a fitness program. Do you know what I mean? It's all of these little things just to help you keep regimentally, give you a bit of guidance to get you where you need to go. When I was younger, I was all about just like doing things for free, um, which is great, going onto YouTube, finding training programs. Uh, but I played the guitar as well. So finding like uh, practice routines and practicing songs and everything. But what I found as I've got a lot, bit, little bit older is that where there's so much information and there's so many different uh, sources of sources to go to or places to get your, your information from, it can be a bit conflicting. And what you could end up doing is trying a bit of everything. And as soon as you get a bit bored, you jump and try something else. And then you're not really sticking to it. You're not really uh, giving it your all. So you're not really giving your time the opportunity to develop. You're just learning how to bounce around continually bounce around and not actually uh, progress in whatever you're trying to do. So I invested in one of their programs. It's called MAPS Anabolic. Um, and so far, so good. Do you know what I mean? I'm on week three at the moment. Um, no, I'm on week... Yeah, I'm on week three, so I've just started phase two. There were like, I think there's like three or four phases and each phase lasts a couple of weeks. Uh, the program itself lasts like, it's nine to 12 weeks overall. I can't remember, it's either nine or 12 weeks overall um uh, basically it's making a difference i'm noticing, noticing a difference um big one it's just basically so it's it's allowing you to incorporate the main lifts so even if you don't want to buy a course i'm not saying to go and buy the one i've got there's loads of other people or companies that make courses even if you're not doing the main buy the course there are a couple lifts that you need to be doing and these are your compound lifts so keep it simple keep it simple keep it light work on your form if you don't know what you're doing go to the gym and if you see someone doing a lift that you that you've got on your list to do just go and ask them oh excuse me can you show me how to do this and that is really simple but the lifts that i recommend that you do do um do do <laughs> lots of do do with a baby around the lifts that i recommend that you do are um uh, starting at the bottom, so I say deadlifts. Uh, deadlifts are great. Um, what I found for core, um, legs, and also my lower back. Again, it's all of that bending, picking, picking up, rolling around, throwing, like all of the things that you've got to do with your kid to stay fit. Um, and then from there, also doing lots of like bench press. Uh, so, and then the one that I've worked on the most, um, that I've needed to work on the most, is my squats. So squats is something that I, I just religiously just avoided um, all of my like lifting or fitness or life, <laughs> basically. Um, I knew the benefits of it, but I was, just, I was just doing body weight squats. I was never doing weighted squats. I just didn't see the benefit of them. And the reason why is when I did try to do them, um, when I was younger, if I saw someone lifted heavy, 
I felt shy lifted light going to the gym and lifted a bit light and I was like oh um I can't lift that much people what people gonna think of me blah 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 but as I've got older I realized forget all of that it's all about just your personal health your personal well-being it's not about other people around you um and it used to hurt as well because I was loading the bar far too heavy for what I could lift so I don't even I don't even lift that much on um on when I do squat days uh, I think the highest I've got up to is with the bar included uh, about 80 kg so it's it's low but it's what I can push at the moment obviously um, I progress every time that I go to the gym so it'd be good to see where I'm where what I'm squatting um, at the end of the year but I'll, I'll report it and let you all, you all know as well uh, so some of the other um, things that I get in as well I love pull-ups. I could not do pull-ups at all when I was younger. I remember this one this one um, story. So we're out with my friends. We were playing, I don't know what we were doing, like throwing a tennis ball, playing football or something. And it went over and got a neighbour's garden. Um, I, live in, I lived in an estate in Peckham, South East London. And I knew the neighbour. It was absolutely fine. And I was like, hey, if the ball goes over, just jump over and get the ball. It's not a problem if I'm not in. It was like, it wasn't a problem at all. And my friends could jump over all the time and get it. I could never climb this wall. I realised like, I'll get my hands on top of the wall and I could never pull myself up. And this is from like eight. And then my next um, memory is I went climbing in Bermondsey. There's a, a climbing wall, indoor climbing wall. And there was like an overhang. So I was climbing, like climbing up absolutely fine. But there was an overhang. And as soon as I got an overhang, I just fell off every time. And I couldn't work out what it was. And it was just, I didn't have any upper body strength at all. So I made it my own little personal mission during lockdown to learn how to do pull-ups. So I bought a pull-up bar, uh, put it in the spare room. And literally, when I started doing them, it hurt so bad, I thought there was something wrong in the bar. So I was, I was like researching, uh, is this bar the right shape? Um, seeing if there's any issues with this particular brand of like pull-up bar that I bought. But then it was just me. It was just me just not having the muscles or strength to do it. So. What I did was I, I literally um, stripped back what I was trying to do. I was trying to do far too many in a day or even trying to do a full pull-up. So I went to like, doing negatives. So jumping to the top of the pull-up and then slowly, 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 slowly uh, releasing myself back down. Um, and that helped to like develop the strength. So when I could do negatives, I could do five, 10 negatives uh, comfortably. I started to do full, full pull-ups. Um, so I'll do like one um, and then I'll just walk off, do my work. Every time I went to the toilet or I got up to get a drink or whatever, I'll just do one more. And this continued for about six months. Um, so if as soon as I could do one comfortably, I would have two and then I'll do three. And it got to a point in the day where I was just like, every time I had a break and I walked past the pull-up the pull up bar, I'll do five, six, seven, do you know what I mean, at a time. So I got really, really good at doing pull-ups. And what I realised is I no longer have to bar up anymore because uh, my little boy was born. Um, he's in that room. Um, but when I go to the gym, if you don't do it every day, it's something that you lose. So if you can, put a pull-up bar up or find something you can do pull-up bars on. I've just found that they're really good just for, again, for picking up, um, having that upper body strength because you're going to be carrying loads um, if you have a little boy or a little girl, a child um, running around or whatnot. Uh, what else? What other exercises have been beneficial for me? Oh, this is a big one. I'm not very good at it at all. I'm not very good at it. Um, I'm going to do a podcast on this at a later date and it's about my asthma and how it affects um, like my breathing. So I mentioned asthma earlier, um, but like, or hay fever earlier, sorry. So my hay fever triggers my asthma and then my asthma, if I don't manage it, it can lead into chest infections. If I get a chest infection, then I'm out. I can't do any cardio or any like sport like properly for say a month to three months, depending on how bad it is. Um, but what I've realized is that if I'm fit, um, I maintain my weight well and I'm running, then obviously all of that is just a lot better. It's a lot more manageable. So something that I'm trying to incorporate now is running. Um, nothing too nothing too crazy. Um, just go for little 5Ks here and there. I've done that in the past. Um, I've done a few like mud runs, like 10K mud runs. I did the tough 15K, tough mud last year. Um, that was really interesting because I had a chest, a chest infection two, two months up to when I had to run it. And I was only able to train for a week. So I did two mini runs 
or 5k um, absolutely struggled before the race um, but I managed to do the race itself I was with one of my friends um, he's a lot fitter than me and like we helped each other get around so and obviously with all the brakes and with the um, with the climbing frames and ice baths and electrocution pools and <laughs> all sorts um, you get to rest up so it wasn't too bad in the end so yeah running just to, for your cardio because my little boy, he's fast. He's faster than you think. Like he'll just be walking and walking, walking slowly next to you, and then he'll just go one, two, three, go, and that's it. He's off. He will literally just shoot off, and you have to be careful. Like I live in in a London. There are cars everywhere. Traffic all over the place. He's not aware of. He doesn't know. He knows what a car is, but he doesn't know that if you run in front of it, it's gonna hit you and you're gonna potentially hurt yourself, die. Do you know what I mean? He will just run into the road if he sees something. If he sees a ball on the other side, he'll just run and get it. The concept of danger isn't really there yet. So keeping fit, being able to like those little sprints just to um, to, to react if there is danger. And uh, like it's important. The reason why I bring this up is because I used to sprint a lot in football. Um, and when I got my most hamstring injuries, it was from like explosion, that like, quick movements. Um, those, yeah, the quick movements from a standstill. And that's when I got the majority of my hamstring injuries. And what I've noticed now as I've got older, because I've not been maintaining my running and sprinting, I notice little like pulls in my hamstring or pulls in my groin. If I like just go, if I just like quickly move in the wrong direction, in a too, if I move in the direction too quickly, basically what I'm going to get at. So training all of those things in as well, it just makes a difference. And I'm, I'm the type of dad that is quite active. Uh, we go to the park, we play football together. We run around a lot, you know. I mean, I want to be quite active. I want to distill that being active and being outdoors is a good thing. Do you know what I mean? I understand that technology is part of being a child as well. Like my work, everything I do is about technology, so I don't expect my child not to use it. Um, but I do try to just, like I said, make sure he understands that being outside and doing outdoorsy things is also um, fun. Do you know what I mean? And he's only going to think that it's fun if he sees me doing it, mum doing it, and we're interacting all together, uh, being fun outdoors. So, yeah, that's the football, being outside, being match fit, getting match fit for a one-year-old. Um, and the big thing, like, my big takeaway, I guess, for, like, getting match fit for my son is I found it a little bit easier this time uh, that when I was younger, when I was trying to get, like, ripped or shredded or whatever. You're, like, getting fit for your child isn't about getting ripped and shredded well it might be it really depends on what your goals are but for me it's more about creating um lasting memories and building stronger relationships with my kids as i mentioned before so being able to play outside being able to go for long runs being able to do those bike rides being able to climb those mountains and all these all these things that we're going to be we planning to do in the future um if i don't look after my health if i don't manage my asthma if I've got injuries all the time, then I'm going to be that dad that's at home as I ask, sorry, um, ask mum, or no, sorry, you can't do it at all. Do you know what I mean? And that's not really the life that I want my children to have. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Stop being busy. Interesting. I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, I've got, like I said, I've got a few ideas uh, for the podcast. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll get some guests on. Uh, we could talk to them about like freelancing, contracting, being a parent, like all of these things, it'll be uh, really, really interesting to get other people's views as well. Um, but yeah, that's it, I guess, for this week. Um, looking forward to sharing more of you. And yeah, have a blessed week and I'll speak to you later. And remember, get out there, stop being busy.